Hi, welcome to another weekly stock market update here on Learn, Grow, Invest. So in this video, what we typically do is go through just the updates for the week. So today is Friday, April 1st. So we're going to go through all the updates that were released on the market from about March 28th, I believe it was to today. So we're just going to go through the things that are interesting. We can't cover everything because, of course, there's just a large amount of news that is released every single day on the market. So we're just going to be tracking with just a few other companies that we've been talking about from the start of the year. And so let's see, let's just go. So if it's your first time here, I want to welcome you. We cover financial education and literacy. We talk about investing, personal finance, just about anything that can be covered within those areas. And we are just, you know, happy to have you join us. I'm going to just open with a word of prayer here. So Lord, thank you so much for this day. Thank you that we're able to learn, grow, and invest together. Bless this community, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. So you've seen the title of this video, right? So FESCO has declared a dividend. I'm going to go right to that one, right? Because that I was interested to see how the market would have responded. So FESCO is, has gotten quite a bit of press throughout this year. We saw where earlier this year it went to a high of 849, right? That's, that's what we have here. And so, you know, there were news of from, from within their prospectus that spoke about doing a dividend and they, they explained their dividend policy there. So we're just waiting to see. So the dividend was announced this Wednesday, right? So let's see where we were. But this week, I believe when it was announced Wednesday, let's, let's go to the news, see what that says. All right, you just click on it here. So on March 30th, March 30th, so that's Wednesday, they declared a one cent dividend and it's for shareholders on record as at April 22nd and the ex-dividend date is April 21st. Now for those who aren't familiar, actually did a video covering dividends and how to, to understand and make make sense of these dates etc but essentially what this means is that if you want to be eligible for that dividend then two trading days before this date is when you want to be a shareholder right so let me check real quickly so april 19th is a tuesday so you'd have to be a shareholder as at that day to be eligible for this one cent dividend right and as i said that was announced on wednesday so that was the 30th and we actually saw, um, I mean, a, a minor decrease from from 657 to 614 on the announcement of the dividend. I guess persons weren't too too impressed with with that amount of dividend, but you have to take it within context of the company. You now, Fesco has you know shown that they're they're intending to 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 to, to expand, and that's where where we saw the billion dollar bond through NCB. And so they're not going to, I think, be too, too liberal with the dividends at this point because they're focused so much on their growth. So you want to bear that in mind. I'm, I'm, I'm still impressed that they were able to honor their dividend because we do have some companies that have not paid a dividend to this point. I won't call any names, all right? So um, we would have seen that on Thursday, the price went down a little bit and it closed today at 629 so that's the last traded price as at the point of this video but you know overall year to date it's up 117 percent month to date just two percent quarter to date two percent and that's because we're pretty much in in a new quarter now right new new month new quarter all right so let me see if there's any other news refresh that we need to take note of uh, none for this week. Only these two would have been out this week. I'm not going to go into the corporate governance policy at this point. So that's FESCO, right? And what I also did 
I went through the JSC news and events page. So I'm going to post that in the description of this video and in the chat right now. And what I like to do before these videos is go through this. I went up to about nine, nine pages deep to see if there's anything that was worth noting. And then I just kind of brought those out into subsequent pages to, to look at right now. So earlier this week, well, this was actually the previous week, but there was um, an announcement of an MOU between the JSC and the JMEA, that's the Jamaica Manufacturers and Exporters Association. So what they're doing here is, you know, a collaboration to see if they can assist more companies that are a part of the JMEA to list on the on the stock exchange. I think this is a great opportunity for those companies to be able to receive funding. So Dr. Marlene Street Forest said with this MOU, they're expecting that in short order, they will have over 100 companies listed on the junior market. This does not, based on how I read it, it's not saying 100 new companies. It's saying with the companies that they, they, are, they are anticipating the number of companies listed on the junior market alone should exceed 100, or at least that's how I understand it. Right, so I think this is, you know, definitely worth noting. You know, I'm going to share it in the description for you to read further, but be sure to check that out. Um, next thing I saw was this on Wigton. Now let's look at Wigton here. So Wigton made, <laughs> made a lot of IPO holders happy over the last couple of weeks. Because as you saw here leading, let's do year to date. It started the year at about 55 cents and the IPO was 50 cents, right? So persons were kind of wondering, you know, what's happening? Let me go to all. And you'll see that, you know, even in, in 2020, we actually saw it still up at about 50, percent from IPO, but then it's been trending down. So for about the last year or so, persons have been wondering what's happening. And so at the start of the year, it went back to, to IPO price. But recently, with, with, with some news that has come out, it started to make its way up. Right, they would have voiced their plans. Let me actually go to the news there. There were some announcements that I believe um, made made investors a little bit more bullish on Wigton, at least in the in the short term. So I'm trying to, let's look at the date that it turned. So it went, so it's around the week of March 15th. It would have gone from, so for the week of March 9th, it was, you know, pretty much around IPO price. And then it went as high as, let's see, 80 cents. That would have been 60% um, from, IPO price. So I'm trying to get, I'm trying to find the exact article that would have triggered that. Um, so I'm not seeing it here. So let me actually just do a web search. Davidson, you're saying it's it's a news that with with flash motors that triggered it. Let me search for that. I haven't tracked Wigton in a long time. Okay, so I'm seeing something here. Just waiting for the page to load and I'll bring it back up on screen. So this was released on the 16th. Still waiting for the page to load, actually. <laughs> but they, okay, so. All right, so it says here, so this was released on March 16th, and it said that um, Wigton is entering the electric vehicle market by an acquisition of a stake in an entity called Flash Holdings Limited. So they have a 21% stake in Flash, and that's a company that is, is registered in St. Lucia, and that will give it an equivalent share in its, its wholly 
owned subsidiary Flash Motors Company Limited. All right, so um, Barrett says he's very optimistic that the market will make EV the car of choice in the region and they want to be a part of it. All right, so that's, so that's around March 16th. So that's around here when that was released. And what you're seeing is that the, the response to that. And then since then, I think it went to a peak of 80 cents on March 22. And then there was some profit taking naturally. And then it's back still up about 30% from the start of the year. So if, if you're an IPO holder of Wigton, you're up 30%. So you should be quite happy with that. And let me see if there's anything else worth mentioning here. There was announcement of a director here purchasing, I think I have it here, director and a connected party purchasing 2.2 million. Now it's week done, so this is not a lot of money, but whenever you see directors purchasing, that's, that's typically a good sign. Um, so that's, that's what happened with week done. So for those who are wondering, it's the news that seemed to trigger this, this movement here. And it had quite healthy volumes on the 18th. And then after that, it was around 10 to 13 million. And then there, but I believe on an average basis, you'll definitely have over a million shares of Wigton traded. I think solely just based on the price. Um, so we saw a healthy volume on this day. So now typically what, what I see in terms of how, how stocks will respond to news, there is the release of the news and then usually there are subsequent updates to that news, right? So what we're seeing here, I don't think is, is uncommon. News, news will come out, investors will respond um we'll lose some some momentum and then at a later point when there's an update of some kind then investors will will respond again so so those are the things that you want to watch for as as a shareholder um so they're within i think they're at q3 now they actually paid a dividend last year it seems a one cent dividend as well let me see where they are in terms of their financials so they released their third quarter on February 14th. So we'll be waiting for their end of year. So that's that's what you have to look out for. If you are a shareholder, you want to go through the quarterly financials and the annual reports, definitely want to have a look when the audited financials come out as well, so that you can see if, you're, if, if your thesis on the company still makes sense, right? But if you see the comparison here between 2020, 2021, when, and 2022, you know, these numbers here, it's, they don't look very promising to me, but, um, you know, you'd have to really dig into it. We haven't done a, a stock review and analysis on Wigton, so I can't really speak from anything else just from looking at these numbers here. So you'd have to really do further, you know, analysis to see what is happening there. All right, so I had some other news that, I had outlined here, let me see. There's also an announcement, well, a few announcements through Eddie Focal. So let me see that one now. So Eddie Focal would have IPO'd a few, well, I think over a month now, or just, well, actually not even a month yet, <laughs> interestingly enough. So from at, at the point, from the point of IPO, it ended today at 369, so that's 269% up from IPO. So the IPO holders are very happy. You know, their persons would have had the opportunity to purchase, you know, while it was on the rise. I'm sure those persons are, are pretty satisfied as well. There was some news that was released this week. Let me get to that right now. So a couple of things, uh, there was the announcement of an acquisition by, by Eddie Focal. So they've acquired the website and assets of Clever School Teacher 
edtech.com. That's a Denver-based edtech company that provides monthly curated K1 resources and live online professional development sessions for teachers, right? So that's, that's the audience that they're targeting here in the US. So the acquisition, which is being financed by the company, will be immediately accredited to earnings. So what that means is that uh, whatever the, the, um, the revenue and so on for this company, it will be brought on to Eddie Focal's income statement. So you can look for that. Um, Gordon Swaby says acquisitions and new markets are high on their priority as a top driver for top and bottom line growth. And we know that from, from within the prospectus review, they have a target of about 322 million in revenue for this year. So, uh, I mean, these, these are things you want to look out for as they try to, to get to that, that target, uh, Mark Gale added that CST that's clever school teacher demonstrates the vast surface area of up of opportunities for edifocal education as many niches include teachers, not just students. Teachers need resources for lesson planning and a transaction was structured through a new sub that's Ramsey and partners attorneys at law advising. Okay. So you want to look out for more information on that actually have not checked out the website here, but the link is there. Feel free to check it out and see, you know, if you, if, if you are any focal shareholder, you want to go and research this company, learn about them, see if, I don't know if they were publicly listed before, probably not, but you want to learn about them, see how they perform, et cetera, because that will give you an idea as to, to how much will be added to, to any focal's books. All right, so that was that. Um, there was also this about the purchase of 370,000 shares by a connected party that was that was released and then another order of I'm wondering so these these amounts look similar I'm wondering if this is the same thing being repeated well this says March 25th this says March 24th so I guess not so these were two two purchases done in the week and you know as I said well what we saw let's see here when the news came out so this was March 29th. So March 29th, when the news came out, we saw it go up to 367 from, from 328. So again, I just want to point out that we're seeing here a response in the price based on news that, that comes out. So the, you want to see how we see it. So what's the best way to say that? Huh? You no, let me scratch that. I was, I was, I was going to try and make a point here that, um, okay, let me, let me just make it this way. If it is that the price has gone up in response to news, those are the kind of movements that I personally want to watch closely because as we saw with Wigton, right, we saw what happened with Wigton. Let me actually go back to that. Um, let me actually go back to that. So you notice how the price responds to news and then there's somewhat of, of, of a correction afterwards. Now in this case for, for Eddie Focal, there wasn't really a, 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 a significant response to the news, which actually means, I mean, based on how it's been trading, I would really expect any sort of correction here because I mean, we've seen it kind of hold between you know three and four just for a couple of weeks but it it's it's been consistently trading above um above three dollars and with 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 the news that keep coming out and you know just what has been shared about the company and so on I think you know it it's going to be trading above a certain level for a while. So I mean what what you can anticipate based on how well i'm trying not to <laughs> to, to, to speculate but i mean you I, I would just say watch watch this one closely if if you're a shareholder i think they're 
Q4 2021 is due anytime now. I think closer to me is when it might be due. We do have an Excel sheet in Telegram group that shows when, when financials are due. So if you join us in the Telegram group, we can share that with you and you can see it. But that's what we're waiting for, the full the annual report for 2021. When that is released, we'll likely do a review on our channel and we'll see where they are in terms of just, you know, progressing towards the goal that they have set for this year. All right. So um, that's pretty much it. And yeah, let's see if there's anything else worth mentioning. I'm trying to see if there's any other news that I had bookmarked. Okay, so there was an announcement just today by Jamaica Tees. I have not read it as yet, so we're going to read it. Um, senior manager of Jamaica Tees Limited has sold shares. 400,000 shares on the 30th, 500,000 shares on the 31st. So that's 900,000 shares at that that have been sold. Let's have a look at Jamaica Tees. I think persons for Jamaica Tees, they're waiting on, on some news. Let's see here. Jamaica Tees. Ah, here we go. All right, so Jamaica Tees would have started the year at about $3.93 and it ended today at about $3.50. So year to date, it's down about 8%. Eight, eight, eight percent. And I think we're waiting for, I think we're waiting for the split between Jamaica Tees and Caribbean Dreams. That's what persons have been waiting for. I believe at AGM last year, they did not give a definitive date. So we're waiting for updates on that. Let's see if there's any news worth mentioning here. Sale of shares, sale of shares, sale of shares, sale of shares. <laughs> and um, their first quarter would have been released on February 10th. We'll probably do a review of that sometime later on this year see if there is anything else that has been announced nothing that I'd, I'd want to look at from the start of the year so there was actually 10 million units traded today so um hmm, let me see here let me actually check i want to see what some of those trades were so I'm going to actually check it on my line for just a sec. Yeah, that's what that's what we're we're realizing, Tamikin. There's um some large volume there. So I want to look at that and see. You know, I always say if 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 there's volumes being traded, then you want to start doing research and see if there's there's anything that is worth noting Jeez. it could i mean i couldn't see my screen there last trades okay all right so let's see so so here's the thing though what i noticed earlier today was there were some sort of issues with J Trader. So I'm saying that because if you notice here, there are three trades that seem to be duplicated, right? So I don't know if this is the very same trade that is repeated three times, because that would add 6.7 million to the units traded. So it may be an error. We don't know. Maybe an error, right? And and you see again, 349, 349, this, this in, in triplicate here. So I don't know if, 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 I, if, if I trust the volumes that I'm seeing, because I think 
the company that we noticed it on was actually Dolphin Cove because Dolphin Cove traded down. So let me look at that one. So this is Dolphin Cove that I'm sharing now. So Dolphin Cove. So the, the lowest it should be allowed to trade before tripping circuit break, I think, is 15%. But it went down, I think, as low as 80, 98 today. I think that's what we're seeing here. And at, at, I think persons in the Telegram group were just report, reporting some weird issues throughout the day. I'm not seeing any duplicated trades, but we don't know if any of these trades are going to be voided. Um, I'm not sure. So if you are a shareholder, you can probably tell us on Monday <laughs> or next week what happened because I don't know if I can trust any of this data that I'm seeing right now. That's that's the part that I'm concerned about. So we saw that it ended the day at, at um, last rated price, 22, current closing price, 20.29. So... Let me see here. So 690,000 units traded today. So I believe they would have announced a dividend if I'm not mistaken. So their audited financials came out and they would have declared a dividend yesterday. Of 40 cents per share so i have not looked at this report so i don't know so if it in fact did trade down it could be a response to the report but because interestingly there was a dividend announcement as well then i mean 40 cent dividend is actually uh, not not a bad dividend so i mean let me see what that yield is let me calculate that right now let me see when it's paid April 29. Shareholders on record April 13. So let's use the price of 20.28 to see what that yield is. 40 cents. That's almost a 2% yield, if I'm, if I'm calculating that correctly. But I mean, a 40 cent dividend is better than some of the dividends we've seen. So I don't think that this, 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 this decrease in price is in a response to the dividend. But based on the trading today, as I said, that issue that we knew about, I'm not sure if any of these trades will be voided or if anything will be released. I really don't know. I can't speak to it. So shareholders, um those of you in the group please tell us on monday what you see if there's anything if if there's any trading that you tried to do uh let let me know how it worked out if you if you tried to buy were you able to buy and if you tried to sell were you able to sell and let me know but that's kind of what we saw there um but i'm not seeing the same duplication that we saw with with jam t and i think it the, the issue was that it halted. It halted at 9.45 or before that rather, but then it was trading again 9.50. So it when, it when it halts, it's supposed to be halted for one hour. It did not do that. So that was, the, that was when we realized that something was wrong. So that's a little strange there. So I don't know if there's a change in policy to how to how the circuit breaker works to to my to my understanding nothing was released to that regard so we don't know what happened there is there anything else that i want to look at well no i think that's it so we did or if you guys have any questions in the comments just let me know so we did our stocks to watch this week Feel free to check that out. Myself, David, and Chike, we spoke about the stocks that we're interested in looking at for the rest of the year. That actually reminds me of one stock that I wanted to mention here today, and that's Trans Jamaica.
All right, that was one of my stocks to watch for the next few months. So I've been talking about Trans Jamaica in our Telegram group since the start of the year, right? Started the year at 124 and since this week. So this week started at the 28th of March. It's been trending up since. Now we, we are anticipating some news because of course there is, I don't think there's anything apart from the announcement of the revenues for last year. Um, yeah, so their their audited their audited financials came out, which I think spoke to them making fifty one million US in revenues for last year. That's about it. Let me just do a search. Um, Trans Jamaica Highway. Fifty two million in total fees. I think that was it. In in terms of news that we saw for Trans Jamaica but we've been seeing it trend up in price so ipo holders at 141 were very very happy to see this i remember persons who were complaining that you know they haven't been seeing anything in a while so i mean this this is is progress this is how much 20 percent year to date um so you know it's interesting to see how it's been moving i'm personally keeping a close eye on it um so jason is saying that you know trans jamaica and wigton are two of his stocks to watch their future looks promising i i think the future looks promising for for tgh i'm not so sure about wigton as yet we'll see because we have quite a few news about the evs and i want to see if if most of it is just noise so i'm waiting to see that and um i think that's Lanestra. Hopefully I'm pronouncing that correctly. How can you trade live on which platform to use? So there are a couple of ways to buy, right? So the first way to buy is once you have a brokerage account, you can pretty much send your order to your broker. So the one way is to just send them an email. I'd like to buy, you know, this company for this price. That's typically how I send it. And that's for those brokers who are not connected to JTrader. So for example, Mayberry would be one of them. Mayberry has their own platform, though I have not checked it out, so I'd have to look into that. Next, you can use JTrader, and I'm just gonna log into JTrader for you to see what it looks like. So we did a video on, on JTrader that you can check out to see how to use it. And then you can also use Moneyline. So I'm going to try and bring up a screen here. So I'm not going to, I'm just going to show you the screen. I'm not going to be able to click on the account because then you'll be able to see my details. But um, let me zoom in here. So what you would do is link your JCSD account. You select that account and then you can just buy. So if you type in, type in let's say fesco it will allow you to select that, that company you just enter the type of order enter the number of shares enter the price and it gives you some information here to help you so for example if i wanted to buy then then someone selling the best ask price is 629 and that's for eighteen thousand shares so if i wanted to buy ten thousand shares and I, for example, put in a market order, it will purchase from this person here. If I wanted a lower price, I could do a limit order and then just enter the type of price that I want. All right. Also, you can use JMB Moneyline to purchase. So those are the three ways, right? You either use, use JTrader, which, which I'm showing here, JMB Moneyline, or you pretty much just send your your order to your broker. No, the last option is not the one you want to choose if you want a specific price or you want to be able to sometimes take advantage of, of the opportunity to um, get, a, get, get a chance to buy from somebody who's selling lower than the market price currently, right? Um, I, say El, I say Derby, asking what's my opinion on carb cement movements 
Well, uh, um, we covered them last week. Check out last week's video. I mentioned carob cement there, so check that out. Um, what's there to say about NCB, Elrico? I don't. What's What's there to say about NCB? I, I don't think there's anything to say about NCB right now. Um, wondering if if something is wrong with your trade. I've been waiting for my account to be approved. Speak to your broker. Speak to your broker, all right? Yes, I can definitely look at JFB. Let me see that here. Speak to, to your broker, Legister. It should not take you more than a couple of days to get that sorted out. All right. JFB is, oh my gosh, um, interesting. So JFB opened on March 11th. And it went to a peak of $1.90, right? Well, went to a peak of $2, right? I didn't actually know that it traded for that price. And then since then, it found its way back to $1.11. And then since this week, we saw some, some volumes going back to it. So it ended today at one thirty. That's still 30% from IPO. That's actually still still a positive return this has been one of those you know controversial ipos in terms of just the feedback from brokers that we saw in the first few days so i mean those who would have participated in the ipo had an opportunity to take profits at 90 percent and if you know for those who stayed they would have been through quite a bit of roller coaster if you actually look this actually Reminds me of a roller coaster, interestingly enough. But I mean, it, I think it's a good experience for investors to understand that not everything goes in a straight line, right? So with, with companies like this, you want to just remember why you bought. You want to understand what you're buying. You want to speak to your financial advisor. Now, there's no news that came out. JPO's IP raise and comments trading, right? This, that's, that's not news, right? So I'm not seeing anything that they would have released. So there's nothing really to speak to. I mean, if it went as high as 190, I think, you know, definitely saw where, where it lost some, some momentum there and started to trend down. It could be because there were, um, yeah, Rochelle. So I spoke to that already, right? Um, the volume to me seemed to be high because of duplication, right? Let me let me go back. Let me go back there. Um, so what we saw here for Jam T was a triplicate of 2.2 million orders. So. That's why I think the volume was so high. So I don't know if it's a very same order or or it's or it's um just triplicated. I I don't know. I don't know. I don't even know if 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 triplicated is a word, right? And I, and that's why I like to use Moneyline because it shows me a little bit more detail than than J Trader, right? So you know this is where it is right now. I believe they have a report due in May. So, I mean, go back to the prospectus, look at what they say in, in terms of you know, what they've been doing. There are some opportunities that they should be closing and adding to the books. So, I mean, I, I think we, we just have to wait and see. In the meantime, it's just really about the price that investors are willing to pay for this company. That really is what it, it, it comes down to, right? If persons are willing to sell for less, the price will go down because you can't buy a company the price can't go down to a dollar and eleven un unless somebody is willing to sell for lower and lower, right? Um, that's that's kind of what we know. So that's really, I mean, there's nothing else really to say for it right now. Would need some some more information, some news, some 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 quarterlies, annual reports, etc., to to speak to that. Um, so I don't want to speak to Jetcon yet, Kai, because there are some news that came out that I want to go into first. Um, so, okay, so Rochelle, you're, 
you're talking about for Jam T reasons why investors were buying or selling. I don't know because we haven't seen anything, any news to speak to that. So, so there's anything else would just be, um, be speculation. So I don't want to do that. Um, Derby, I don't know if JFP is, is pump and dump. I don't know. I don't know how to speak to that. Yes, JMB share buyback. The period for which they'll start buying back does start April 1st. So I don't know. We don't know exactly when they'll buy, but JMB has been moving up. I think we saw it at $45 this week. If you're a JMB shareholder, $45 is a dream for you. So um, I know persons would be happy. Okay, so 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 Demetrius is saying that he bought some Dolphin Cove today for about $18 and it was reversed and he's not seeing it on his on his platform. All right, so there you go, All right? Nothing on, on Espress catering right now. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna save that for next week. What is, is that, is, is that current, can you share that link? Um, let's search for that. That is interesting. Um, is that current news? Okay. All right. So I found this on, on Twitter. Um, wow. Okay. So this is, I mean, Dr. Pops <laughs> shared that. Uh, Wisinko is on fire right now, so we, we don't know the extent of the damage or anything like that because it's still in, in progress. So, wow. Um, yeah, we definitely want to, to stay tuned for that. So, yeah, wow. I really hope that nobody gets hurt and um, we'll just have to wait to see more information on that. Um, that just says asking, do you have to have an account with JMB to use money? Yes, yes, you need you need an account. You need an account to be able to use it. Um, okay, cool. So, guys, before I go, I want to shout out Demetrius Fairman. Uh, check out his YouTube channel. Um, very, very good content. Feel free to show him your support. He's on Instagram as well. So check out um, his page on both platforms and show him your support. Tell him that you you just comment on the, one of his videos that you found him through Learn Grow Invest. All right. Um, maybe we can see. <laughs> Jason, that's not cool, right? Uh, let's see how they respond. Now we saw with with separate after that fire that they were able to recover pretty quickly. It depends on the extent of the damage, right? Um, these are not good things, right? So if if somebody, if, if there's a fire, that's not a good thing, right? So we want to ensure that persons are okay. It is a loss of property, it's damage, it, 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 you know, things need to be repaired, there's a recovery period, etc. I mean, that's what insurance is for, right? So let's wait to see some more information. Um, okay, cool. So I think I've answered all the questions. I'm going to ask you guys to do a couple of things before you go. If you have not done so yet, subscribe to our newsletter. We release an, an email every Monday. So we'll just kind of do a recap of the week before and we'll share tips and stuff that you can use to, to level up on, on, your, on your investing. So you want to subscribe. And you'll just get get the emails if you don't if if you've subscribed but you don't see the emails just check your spam or promotions folder. Next thing that I want to ask you to do is subscribe to our YouTube channel. We have over 100 videos on on investing and personal finance. If you want to learn how to invest, there is investing for beginners. It's actually our most popular video. If you want to learn about dividends, there's a complete guide to dividend investing if you want to learn how to speak to your financial advisor we have a video on that so feel free to check out our channel see if there's anything that can help you to learn more as an investor if you if you have if you are a teacher or a student and you want to do a presentation for your class we do that free of charge 
If you're in corporate and you want to do a presentation for your coworkers, that does come at a charge, but it's it's very reasonable. So you can reach out to us for that as well. And um, yeah, thank you so much for joining us here. I'm just checking real quickly if there's anything. Um, well, yeah, I mean, that's, so, so Darby is saying that the Mafood family won't feel it. I mean, that's what insurance is for, right? But I just think about, you know, whether or not there's damage to, once there's damage, there's need for, for repair, all right? Um, well, let's see on Monday. Let's see on Monday how the market responds, and we, we'll definitely talk about it next week, Friday, all right? So thank you guys so much for being here. I'll see you on the Telegram group. Be sure to check out the other videos on our channel. Please like this video. I really appreciate it if you do that. And I'll see you next week. We're going to do the stock review for Jamaica Broilers on Wednesday. So be sure to join us for that. I'm not sure if I'm going to be releasing any videos on Monday as yet. It really depends on how the weekend goes. I'm actually not 100% right now. <laughs> so we'll see what I'm able to do over the weekend. All right. Thank you, Jason. Really, really do appreciate it. It is a great community indeed. All right.